Today on The Breakfast, human rights lawyer Femi Falano says former President Goodluck Jonathan cannot contest in the 2023 presidential election, citing constitutional provisions barring the ex-president from seeking re-election. Also on The Breakfast, we will be bringing you up to speed with the latest in the exciting world of sports. And we also will be reviewing all the major stories making headlines across national dailies. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. It's another edition of The Breakfast coming to you from PLUS TV Africa here in Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Justin Akadonye. It's a beautiful Friday morning and it was really great to be back on your screen. I am Messi Bopo. It's been an anticipation for those who actually observe the holiday here. Looking at the very long holiday it that has been caught short. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like the ticket has been caught. Well, it is. It is really. Well, something for them. But hey, holiday, no holiday. Most of the time when you talk about holiday, I don't even look forward to anything because we know ordinarily there is no holiday for people like us. But it is Friday. It is uh, the weekend and uh, it is a restful one. As much as possible, try to just ease out all of the stress. Uh, for you ladies, as you would say, let your hair down, whatever that means. And it just means just to <laughs> try and relax. <laughs> How do you guys let hair down? How does no, that so work? It's, it's, so is this it's, what you do by letting your hair down? No, no that's not, work. not what it means. So, uh, okay. it's, it's just, you know, part of speech. And it describes the fact that you need to relax, have fun, you know. Just, so your hair is up right now? Well. Yes, my hair is up because I'm at work. <laughs> so let it down. Okay. Just relax and go ahead. So not necessarily letting your hair down. But don't let your hair down. I thought maybe you, you, you just uh, pack <laughs> it up and just let it go and um, just relax. Whatever that means. Whatever Are you attending is. any wedding this week? Because I know you and weddings every weekend. So it's anyone this weekend. You almost sound like I crash every weddings in Lagos. I don't know. <laughs> so how do I attend weddings every weekend? Huh? I leave for weddings for weekends. What are you trying to tell me? No, I won't be attending any weddings. Hopefully, I'll try and get all the rest I can uh, this weekend because you can never ever uh, overemphasize uh, the place of um, good rest and, of course, uh, good sleep. Let us just slide on to top trending. And uh, it is um, been revealed that the core member who died, uh, sorry, who was uh, declared meeting, missing on the 14th of April um, was later found, but not really in the state that um, most people or her family would have wanted. That's Stephanie Seremba Terungwa. She uh, was declared missing and later her body was found mutilated. So um, it, it's, it's really sad, but you, the, the story hasn't really... Uh, so I feel like we're still on top of the situation and trying to understand what led to her body being yeah. dismembered. But it's no reason, and so the issue of security will continue to be very, um, will be on the top of our discussion, would we'll always you know, make the headlines until we make it safe for Nigerians and every other person. Now, the, the most unfortunate part is the fact that prior to this time, uh, you remember how we came about the NYC scheme and the importance of it. It was prior after the uh, civil the war, civil, and of course yeah, we taught that. Let's begin to integrate, reintegrate, and all of that. The three hours, as you want to say. Mm. Now, but have we lived up to the three hours? The essence of it. Constantly, you have people who are deployed from a certain region to another region, so they are able to integrate into the system, understand the people and also get to learn culture or language. And it's supposed to force a unity. Once upon a time, if you find anyone wearing the uniform as a youth corps member, it's always a lot of privilege that comes with that. So for instance, you're about to board a public transport. You're given you know, an extra. I mean, you could, just, you could just go ahead and say, you know what, don't worry because you're seen as a property that belongs to the entire nation. And so let's say you'll be government picking. But it's really, really sad that you would have someone wearing that and people no longer. I mean, so the essence of it, we've actually practically lost it entirely. Uh, we used to have the way we treat those who wear this uniform at every point in time. At every point in time, exceptions were made for them. It's quite sad. It's really, really sad that um, 
it's no longer safe for anyone. It's no longer safe even for the, uh, you know, the youth core members. And that's why people constantly would say, you find out that someone is deployed from a certain region to another region, and then they find a way to redeploy and get to a, a safer path. They don't want to go there. So people have constantly asked, it, let's scrap the scheme. Mm. Security, number one, is top on the list. How far have we have we made it, you know, safe for our children? Those would have to go to these camps to go to different parts where they don't have parents. We found out the issues of negligence, right? Issues of negligence that has led to the death of core members. I mean, you find out that someone has different ailment and no one paid attention to her or, or him. And in the course of all of that, uh, the the lost your lives. How about the fact that it's no longer safe for this person? So it's a lot. Yes, but it, it brings us back to the fact that every day we're, we're losing lives. And the essence of government and governance is that lives and properties would be protected. And if government cannot leave on top of the situation, if we cannot understand the basics of government, and then why do we even exist? Why is there a government? That's the next question. So yes, we, we need yes. to do better. Now, this does not stop the fact that you would have you know, another person who will become a victim. But it's really sad. Our hearts sympathize, you know, with the family of Stephanie and um, every other person. It, it's really heartbreaking and very emotional to talk about that. About yes, this, this it morning. is a very, 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 very sad situation. You have raised um, all the issues. Most of the times, um, there's um, core members uh, are deployed to areas, regions that are very restive over time. They have been used as uh, ad hoc staff for election duties and um, we've had stories where they have been killed, where they have suffered, you know, from violence that have erupted, erupted from, you know, elections. And uh, most times um, the security that they should be given, they don't get. And uh, families, um, parents uh, would uh, allow their children to just go and do the mandatory, you know, one year national service. And they are not even certain anymore if their children will come back to them the same way they left. All the times they come back with one or two diseases they never had before. Sometimes they come back being maimed. At the point, uh, like you had said, there was this outcry for uh, the disbandment of the NYC because most people could not really see the essence, you know, that it was... Uh, uh, the law promulgated it for in the first place in the in the 1970s. It is really a sad one, but then, like you had said, um, our hearts uh, go out to the parents and the um, family of um, this um, Sarah who died uh, trying to, you know, do her own national service for our country that have not really taken the security of um, people, you know, on the top uh, front burner. We'll move away from that one. Um, the NYC is also still in the news. Uh, I think it happened uh, in Enugu State. Um, uh, so about 38 or so of them, you know, were uh, sanctioned for various reasons. Uh, some of them, you know, absconded during service, while some of them, you know, did not really do all the needful as stipulated by the NYC um, um, uh, edit and all of that. But Mercy, you know, I wonder why people, you know, would um, go to a particular state. At the end of the day, they don't want to serve. It's either they are running away or absconding, or sometimes we've had cases where people, you know, would ask other people to help them uh, with their clearance, what they do monthly, and they go out to where they want to stay, maybe where they do businesses or where they live. So at the end of the day, it was it would seem as though that um, they, you know, served when they actually did not serve. In, the, in that particular state they were posted to. But the truth is that I, I wish NYC could be a bit um, flexible with all, all that is going on in the country. Should anyone have any reason why they don't want to stay, logical reasons that is, why they can't serve in a particular place, don't force them. If they feel, although we can always get what we want, we can't be giving people preferential treatment when it comes to postings and all of that. But for if the, the reasons are really genuine and um, they can't stay in a particular place for any particular reason, you should just oblige them. Yeah. So it brings us back to the first conversation. I mean, the point that we started with, it talks about um, what's the essence of the scheme. At the end of the day, we need to understand why the scheme exists. And so it would be important now, since the establishment of the NYC scheme, the big question would be, have we had a review? Mm. So we haven't. We haven't reviewed the scheme since its establishment. And it, it, it's not even 
you know, it's not normal to go to an entire process and not sit back and have a review and find out what's going on. How have we fared over the years? Have we lived up to the essence that were created? So it's, it's time that we sit back and look at the essence of the scheme and ask ourselves, is the scheme living up to its purpose? And we need to also, now for, for a lot of persons who have argued that we cannot, you know, uh, just do away with the scheme. Because some people are saying, scrap it. It's not important. It, it has taken life. It has caused a lot of harm than good. But some people would say this costs, you know, I mean, there's a lot of benefit that has come to us with that. Some persons would never have the privilege of traveling outside of a particular region or a state, but not for the scheme. So we understand all of that. But the point is, we need to get to a point where we sit back and review and reject and improve mm. it, improve the system and see what we can do. But that has not really happened. And, and it calls for a lot of consent. So um, if you begin to ask yourself why people saying they don't want to stay in the primary place of assignment, they are being deployed to a certain place and they want redeployment deployment. So what, what's the reason? Why are they asking for it? Mm. Several issues. Security top on, 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 on the situation. I mean, there are some regions, I don't want to begin to mention, you know, for some, for some reason, um, but there are some regions you have to post people to, they will find a way to work it out because they don't want to go there. And so uh, uh, you find that all of this activity is going on. Should that be the case? That's on, on one hand. Mm. So, the, I mean, it's quite encompassing. I think that it's time that the government, the federal government of Nigeria, uh, sits back and look at the, the NYC scheme. And, and let's begin to decide what we want to do with that scheme. Let's also understand why the scheme was initiated in the first instant. And if it is not leave its purpose, and then let's move, you know, let's find a way, move away from it, improve it, and yeah. adjust the system to accommodate, you know, our current reality. But top on the notch is the fact that security is a major concern. Yes, it should always um, be. It is on the front burner. It should still be on the front burner, not just for core members, but of course, indeed, for every Nigerian, because uh, how can you be in your own country and somehow you feel like you are a refugee? It just does not make any sense at all. We'll leave um, the NYC for one moment and go to something that is, that is equal each friend in. Uh, <laughs> This time around, um, we hear that um, uh, there's a particular herbalist. Uh, well, I don't have anything <laughs> against um, African traditional religion or beliefs or however you get your own um, healing, uh, relief, sucker, whatever it is. Uh, but when uh, someone is collecting, Mercy, that's a whopping about um, 26 million naira for cleansing. Mercy, how far would you go to get cleansed? No, you shouldn't be asking me that question <laughs> because I have a big trust but issue. Your brothers, That's number our one. cousins, and Nigerians are going. So for it, that. you remember recently where we talked about Ponzi scheme and not necessarily Ponzi scheme because some of this uh, investment platforms mm -hmm. and what have you uh, don't come in and they don't come out and say we're Ponzi scheme. But if you look at the operations over time, you would understand. And re, you know, we got to the point where we talked about the fact that people s don't seem to understand how money works. <laughs> uh, you don't understand the dynamics of money. And then you think that somebody tells you, give me 300,000 naira. In, th in, in the next three months, you're going to get 40% of that. I mean, are you a thief is the next question to ask. So it's gullibility, P people are very gullible. Mm -hmm. And people would always say, we want to say that religion and what have you, culture is a major problem. So the, the Hebelis, I think they have upgraded. They understand the fact that they even understand more than the people who are seeking help. So imagine you, imagine you. No, no, look at you yourself. <laughs> a grown adult, an adult as you are. So you're chunking out. I'm not sure that that money was gotten from one person, right? Well, I think it was in the foreign foreign currency. I it was one in, an individual. I don't even know if it's just, but basically <laughs> if it's just, if it's one or several, that money is big. No, money. so I don't imagine how an individual uh, what, would chunk out twenty six kind of million. Cleansing from spiritual problem or from all your village people or what exactly? I don't get it. We need to do better as a people. We need to understand. <laughs> so, but the truth is, I think that we haven't been told the truth over time. So, for instance you probably get into, I'm not saying that powers do not exist. I mean, I do not undermine uh, the spiritual aspect of life, you know, so there's, there are powers, I mean, spiritual and what have you. But most times we're very quick to blame our problems and our <laughs> issues on demons and our and grandmothers and our village people <laughs> and every other person. Now we leave ourselves out of the equation. Mm. And then, you see, things don't even happen like that. Even the Bible itself would say that faith without works is dead. 
So there's always a human part to every miracle. As much as you anticipate a miracle, what are you doing? For instance, you want a job. You haven't gotten a job. The question you should ask yourself is, what have you been doing to get a job? Have you put in That's the work? That's the question. You, have you put in the work? Have you done your bid? Or do you sit at home and pray and expect that you get a job? That a job would fall you know, on the table for you. And no, then you get it. No more so but you need heaven. to go out. You need to make an effort. There's, there's always a part. So be, because we have, I think it's a mindset. The mindset will constantly make us think that people are problems, and that's why we go, go around seeking for help, spiritual help, cleansing you from what issues. The issue that if you look at that at the end of the day, you are the cause of your problem. What investment? So you want to talk about money. What business do you have with money if you are not associated with the process of making money? Are you rendering services? And even if you're rendering service, money does not chunk out like that. So it takes time. Now, so what are you doing? Do you have a product? So you just, somebody tells you the reason you're broke, the reason you're poor is that your father, your great-grandfather has curses. held you. No, we're not saying that these things don't happen, they but do I'm saying happen. that to... You know, to some extent, but you now go to know, the extent of to be... us and throwing such money because uh, you feel. So, that, what are uh, you being cleansed <laughs> from exactly? But from, it's okay. From all the from all the issues that has been bugging your entire generation for years, uh, from all the the issues that make you not progress in your business and all of that. Heavily, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm so, what would the heavily be doing with twenty six? Uh, what, what do the heavily be doing with uh, 26 million? Uh, Mercy, sometimes I find out that, I don't know, <laughs> ironically, those heavily, uh, those uh, native doctors, those spiritualists, uh, with the 26 million, it, it, it doesn't hit on them. <laughs> you never can tell. <laughs> it's a disguise. Uh, maybe because they always. So when you. What we see in the movies is. Yeah, well, that's what so we, Is it just the movies that are making us It's confused? the movies. Have you ever visited a heavens <laughs> before? You tell me because I don't know what they look like. Apart from what we see. I know they usually tie red or uh, red cloth behind That's what the movies tell like, us. They put leaf in there. <laughs> Maybe they have mansions across, but we're saying that we need to understand ourselves as people. We need yeah. to understand our environment. We also need to understand Let's you be know, wise. everything. Let's, Let's be, wise be wise at the end of the day and not be gullible because it could also pass for another Ponzi scheme, if you ask me. <laughs> All right, that's as much as we can take on top trending for this morning and indeed for this week. A top trending returns again on Monday, but we will take a quick break and when we return, we will be reviewing the top um, of the front pages of major dailies in a moment with an analyst, of course. Join us again.